Okay, so let's continue with the modeling example. Um, here on the right, it will be a 2D deformable object. We, in a part module, we choose wire. So, and this is exactly the, the trick where you can, so to say, access the world of beams if you go for wire. Even in 3D, it's the same, it's called the same, it's called wire. Um, this bracket here depicted on the right has a height of 100 and a width of 102. However, what's very important is we add this geometric point here um, at a distance of 20. Why? Not because this is some sort of intersection uh, of, the, of the beam. So it's still from, from this point to this point, it's still a continuous beam. However, by introducing this feature point here, it's just, you just click once with the mouse and it introduces such a feature point. You give Abacus the option to apply boundary conditions at this particular point. For example, a force or velocity displacement type um, boundary conditions. So always keep in mind that usually you cannot, so if you model the beam here on the left, you cannot simply assign a force right here because Abacus doesn't know that there is an anchor point at which a load can be applied. Because remember, the problem mathematically only exists, so to say, in the beam's axis. So orthogonal to that, Abacus says, okay, yeah, there is no such thing as looking at a beam from the side. So whenever you want to apply um, loads, boundary conditions, whatever type, at a particular point, at such a feature point. We'll use a global seed size of 10 that will yield 10 elements uh, in the height and in the width of this bracket. Um, I hope we have the time to compare different element types. So you see some Euler Bernoulli beams. Um, maybe we can look into the effect of using hybrid if we have a very small cross section then maybe a hundred um, in length compared to... You, you, I hope you um, hear that I don't use particularly millimeter or meter or whatever because this is up to you. So usually we talked about this in the first tutorial, you can choose the um, units of length. In my case it will be usually millimeters and thus the elastic and plastic material properties are defined in megapascal. So we will model simple version of aluminum, uh, the given Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, and optionally you can check um, or you can integrate plastic. So this is very simple linear plastic material model just to see the difference because Beams behave vastly different uh, if they are if if they are modeled as an elastoplastic material model or simply as an elastic material model. So think about, for example, real pipelines. You don't want plastic deformation while using it in uh, or placing it on the ground of the seafloor. Um, then the beam section orientation. We'll do some things here to highlight the importance of this. Uh, we choose this um, simple 10 by 5 rectangular profile, um, similar to the example we did in the first tutorial. Um, then under section, the, we can uh, define the beam and then during analysis, before analysis, the calculation of our cross-section behavior. We talked about this in the previous slide. Um, we'll continue with assigning the section to uh, the part. I hope you remember this. Uh, then, we, then we will check rendering the beam profile in our view uh, module. This, this might help to understand to get a, I would say, a 3D feeling for our 1D problem because otherwise it's just a thin line. But Abacus gives you the option in, as a, depending on what you have chosen for the cross section, you can actually display this different cross-section and their orientation. Um, 
the assembly will be very simple because we have one part that we will use in the assembly. Then, as I said in the last one, we are here to always use Energium on. However, it might be interesting to see, um, especially in this class of elements, how enormous the effect of switching between nonlinear geometry on and off is. So the time step size, as I pointed out, start with a smaller than suggested one and um, also we will specify the maximum. Why? Because if the maximum stays at the total time of your step, let's say one, one second, so to say, then you might only have one frame that is captured depicting the entire process. Why? Because it might be the case that Abacus is able to run the entire simulation in a few steps. So if you give a maximum of let's say one tenth of your total time, then you force Abacus to at least make 10 pictures throughout the process. Uh, boundary conditions, we will fix the ends and apply a minus 50 uh, velocity in y direction at this specific feature point uh, which I talked about before and then we can for example the results analysis we look at the stresses we will um, you um, see the difference between energy on, on and off but I will also show you how to combine XY data that means in this case we for example we will, at, from this feature point, we are again talking about this feature point, uh, we'll get the uh, referen the reaction force, sorry, as well as um, the displacement in the y direction. So it might be of interest to combine the two to see a reference, uh, sorry, um, reaction force over displacement plot. I uh, usually quite of interest in such an analysis. Okay, um, I'm gonna switch to Abacus now and uh, don't worry, we'll go through all of these steps in more detail and yeah, just follow me into Abacus. Bye bye.